Good morning. This is uh, our, our program today. Once again, Delta TV Dusome. Asimwa Jude is my name to take you through uh, this uh, program. Uh, <coughs> before I go any further, I will uh, request you to allow me to put uh, for this mask because there is nobody around me uh, to spread me the virus. So allow me to put it off so that I can uh, communicate to you well. As I've told you, Asimwa Jude is my name. Um, <coughs> here, I take you through science, primary science in particular. Uh, you children who are in P4, P5, P6, uh, you are now our target because our friends in P7 are already uh, in school. So for us who are still at home in P4, 5, 6, we still need to continue helping you so that you can uh, perform better when time comes for you to go back to school. Possibly, possibly next year uh, when we are allowed, then we can uh, go back to school. So we need to keep reminded. We want to thank and take a group of companies that has since, since lockdown, since March, who have been there uh, trying to help you and all this is uh, all it has been done by Ntake Group of Companies. We appreciate the uh, Ntake Group of Companies. So thank you so much because you have helped our children at home to keep reminded every day, every day, uh, post, uh, majorly Mondays and Tuesdays, the primary children have been helped. So we thank you, Ntake Group of Companies. The parents who have uh, been there, uh, you have provided time to our children to sit and uh, follow us up and learn these lessons. We thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. So, um, I happy, I want to say happy uh, World AIDS Day to all of you. Today is a World uh, AIDS Day. <coughs> so, we want to uh, wish you this day a nice day. Um, Yes, so allow me to uh, start our science. I hope our children, there where you are in your sitting room, on your uh, dining table, your reading table, you have already got a book, a pen, a pencil, all those ones, and you are ready to learn. So let us begin. You call even your friends who are yet, who are yet not there call them so that they can settle and we have the learning. Alright, um, today we have questions to go through that will benefit children because our learning, we have got the, our learning from P4, P5 and P6. So we have numbers to discuss from different uh, classes as I have mentioned them. So please be uh, attentive, the child out there. Now, um, one, the first question uh, is, what is first aid? What is first aid? That is a, uh, got from P4. P4, what is first aid? So, as I've told you, it is P4 to P6. Science. Uh -huh. P4, P6 science. Alright, so our question number one uh, is what is first aid? Yes, I've had somebody mentioning the answer. First aid. So we say first aid is the first help. First help given to a casualty before being taken to the what to the hospital. So first aid first aid is the first help. First help given first help given to a casualty. Do you know the spelling of casualty? Casualty so when you are writing the word casualty, 
we don't have letter I in the word casualty. So you write the word casual, then put TY. That is casualty. So who is a casualty? We are going to answer that. So we are just first finish this one and we are saying first aid is the first help given to a casualty before before being sample normally leave this word they say before taken so before being taken before being taken to the what to the hospital uh-huh sample say before being taken to the health center uh -huh, that is also okay before being to the nearby sample put that word nearby hospital uh-huh <coughs> so that's also okay so first uh, first aid is the first help given to a casualty so a casualty is a who is a casualty somebody say it uh-huh yes yeah, so a casualty is an injured person or you can say a casualty is a person who has got any accident are we together p4 p5 uh-huh so a casualty is a person who has got any accident imagine you have been traveling let's say from masaka coming to kampara okay and then uh one gets an accident god forbid so when uh, let's say the car knocks and you get an injury you are rushed to the hospital okay uh huh. So you become a casualty. But before you are taken to hospital, there is a, the first help that you are given. That first help, like a, uh, washing the wound, uh, putting the bandage, dressing the, the the wound. That first help they give you before they take you to the hospital for medication. That first help is called the first aid. Out together, children. Uh huh. So that is first aid. All right. So in B, our first, our second, uh, under that, how is a first aider different from a casualty? Uh huh. How is a first aider? Are you getting that question, children? How is a first aider different from a casualty? So we say a first aider. Uh huh. Uh, before we go to that, think about it. Uh, first, think about that. Okay. Uh, to take you from uh, uh, on this one, we said first aid is the first help given to a casualty before being taken to the hospital. So the help you are given uh, when say you have got burnt by water, okay, <coughs> that one is called the scald, okay. When you are burnt by hot metal, that one is called the a burn, okay. So a burn is a if you are. You are burnt by hot liquid, any hot liquid, be it water or milk, that is a skull, okay? So, the first aid given, put the injured part or the burnt part in cold water for at least 15 minutes, okay? If you, are, you have been beaten by a snake, okay, you tie a piece of cloth on the upper part of the beaten area, and that piece of cloth is called the a tourniquet, all together. So, there are many accidents and uh, many uh, first aids given out together. All right, so okay, let's go to this. Uh, the question B, it was, how is a first aider different from a casualty? So a first aider is that person who gives what? Uh, first aid out together. If you have, uh, let's say, you, as I said, you have been burnt by, by uh, water, okay? Hot water has poured onto you. So the person who makes sure he gets clean cold water in a basin or in any container, clean cold water, not that. Uh, so you put the burnt part, if this is a burnt arm, you put it in the water, okay? That person who does that to give you the first aid, before you are rushed or before you are taken to the hospital, that person is called the first aider. All together. Then you who is being 
uh, given first aid, you are called what? A casualty. So a first aider is the person who gives the first aid, while a casualty is a person who has been injured. Altogether, a person who who uh, who has been injured is called the, uh, a casualty. So let us start with the <coughs> a first aider. We say a first aider. A first aider is a person who does what? Who gives first aid. Out together P for children, P5, P6. A person who gives first aid is a what? A first aider. So what's the difference? Now we use while, while, Sample say whereas, so you can also say while a casualty, a casualty is an injured what is an injured person. Okay, good. So that is the difference between the two, a casualty and a an injured, I mean a casualty and a first aid. Okay, <coughs> that's the difference. Okay, when you go to C uh, under this, state anyone quality of a good first aider. So, having understood who a first aider is, now this first aider must bear some qualities. Okay, so what are the qualities? Of a good first aider. Let me uh, think you have written this one. So we write qualities of a good first aider. A person who gives first aid is a first aider. So qualities, in C, we are going to write qualities, qualities of a good first aider. Are we together, children? Qualities of a good first aider. Uh -huh. Let me start with capital Q. Qualities of a good first aider. You understand that one? So, a first aider is the person who gives first aid, as we have said. Now, qualities, what qualities should this person have, okay? How should this person be? How should this person behave? How should this person uh, put in mind? What should this person put in mind as he or she gives a first aid? So one, uh, he or she should be kind, okay? We can say, should be Should be kind. Okay? So a good first aider should be kind. So if that's what you have to say, that a good first aider should be what? A kind. Okay? So for example, if uh, so you have got an accident, some metals have entered into your flesh. Okay? So if the metals have entered your flesh, that means this, this first aider should not use a lot of force to remove, should not press. Okay, and it causes more pain, okay, more injuries. So the person should be kind as he or she is giving first aid. Should be confident. Should be what? Confident. A good first aider should be confident. Being confident means uh, knowing what you are doing, okay? Know what you are doing. Uh, that is being confident. When you are confident, you know what you are doing. You know, when uh, I do this, this person will get it healed. If we say somebody has been burned, if I put this into water, I know this person will get it. Uh, the, the temperature will reduce and will get well. Okay? So you have to be confident. <coughs> so another one it has to be knowledgeable. Should be a good first aider, should be. Knowledgeable 
Kirbi wate knowledgeable. So meaning the person should know what he's doing in the mind, okay? Should be knowledgeable. How together? Uh, this one is uh, quite different from being confident. Confident is being strong enough, okay? You have to be strong. Maybe, uh, let's say, for example, if somebody has been bitten by a snake, you have some fears as you are giving first aid, you, you fear, then you are not confident, okay? So when you are giving first aid, you have to be strong enough and uh, you know what you are doing. Be strong, that is being confident. Then knowledgeable, you have to know what you are doing as you give uh, first aid. Out together, uh, should be clean. A good first aid that should be should be what a clean. Hmm? So you must be very clean before you give first aid. Make sure you wash your hands. Uh, keep yourself clean so that you do not. Uh, uh, let's say somebody has got a wound. You are trying to dress the wound, and your hands are dirty. You are adding uh, germs. You are adding dirt to the wound, then you are causing more harm. All together, all right. <coughs> uh, should be tactful. A good first aid should be tactful. Should be what? Tacti. Tactful. You understand that one? So you have to be tactful. You how you know all, uh, all what you have to do. So you have to be tactful. You know when I do this, this person will uh, be uh, will recover. All the injury, I mean the, the the damage will will end. Okay, the pain will reduce. Now this one have quick recovery. Okay, you know all the reasons for giving first aid. Then lastly, we can talk about quick. Should be quick. Hmm. A good first aid that should be quick. There are very many uh, reasons or there are many qualities we can talk about. So you have to be very quick because when one, we are saying first aid is the first help. Okay? The first, this first help has to be first. The first help has to be first. All together? So you have to be first in whatever you do so that this person is relieved of pain because we give first aid to reduce pain so when one has been burnt he has pain when one gets an accident pain comes so you have to be so quick so that you reduce the pain so that you promote quick recovery so that you prevent further injuries out together reasons we give first aid okay so let's move on hope you have written this let's go to uh, reasons for giving first aid. Why should we give first aid when one gets an injury, when one gets a damage? Why should we give this person uh, first aid? So we are going on to reasons for giving first aid. Okay, so we let's go on. We thank you so much, a Group of Companies for giving us this chance to stand and uh, talk to our children at the, their homes. We thank you so much for helping our children at home. Remember, Antake Group of Companies is the best producer of uh, Casper Home Baking Flour, uh, the serviettes, the teepees, uh, all those, the good cakes if you want, uh, birthday cakes, you go to Antake Group of Companies and uh, they are everywhere in the shops, the supermarkets, you can get them. So please support Intake Group of Companies. Uh -huh. So we have reasons. Remember we are on number one. So this one is a uh, part C. Uh -huh. Reasons. Okay, it is part D, yes. Part D. Reasons for giving first aid. Reasons for giving first aid. Mm -hmm. I hope you still remember what I've said about 
first aid. Now, what are the reasons why do we give first aid when one has got an accident? Why should the first aider go on to the, to the casualty and give the, this first help? Is it necessary? Yes. So, first aid is given. Uh -huh. Oh, somebody has said, or oh, even all the answers under this. Thank you so much for being very sharp. So, we give first aid. Yes, one has said, to reduce pain. To reduce what? Pain. Okay. We give first aid to reduce pain. Uh, we give first aid to save life. To save what? Life. Okay. We give first aid to promote quick A. To promote quick what? Quick uh, recovery. Are we, are we together? And then we also give first aid to prevent further injuries. To prevent further injuries. All together. So those are the reasons as why we give uh, first aid. So now children, let us first go for a very short break. When we come back, we are going to continue from here. Do not go away. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much for being attentive. So we are moving on from this. Uh, remember when we went for a short break, we have been looking at the reasons for giving it first aid. And we said first aid is given to, to save life. You give first aid to, uh -huh, to save life. Okay? Uh -huh. First aid, we we'll say, say it is given to reduce pain. Because when one gets an accident, he has or she has got it pain. So you give uh, first aid to reduce pain. So for example, if someone has been burnt by hot charcoal or hot water, there is pain in. So what you have to do, get clean cold water in a basin or in a, in a container and put the burnt part in that uh, area. So you reduce pain. The cold water will reduce the temperature uh, within the body or the burnt part. To promote quick recovery, we have talked about this one. To promote quick water, quick recovery. All together. So, uh, one will recover very fast. So, when this person is rushed to the hospital, then the doctor has where to start from. So, remember, in first aid, medical equipments are not used. Medicine is not used. So, when has when Injuries. All together. For example, after you have nursed the wound, you have you have dressed. I mean, you have washed it. You have dressed it. Then there will be no. Uh, you have prevented further injuries. This wound you have covered it, so it cannot be injured again until uh, it is uh, worked upon by the doctor. <clears throat> so another question can be asked here is. Uh, the difference between first uh, aid box and the first aid kit okay so a first aid kit uh, is a set of items used to give first what aid okay then a first aid box is a container where first aid tools are kept or where first aid uh, instruments are kept but the set a set a group of those items used to give first aid is called the first aid kit so you shouldn't uh, forget that one all together <coughs> okay let's move on to the next number we appreciate all of you children uh, who are 
following us and you are always there to have the learning together with us. Thank you so much. Number next is uh, until uh, given uh, two examples of good eating habits. Examples of good what eating habits. Examples of good eating what habits. Now, when you are eating food, food has been brought on the table and you have you are seated at the table, you are going to start eating food or you want to go and start eating food. What are the good eating habits? What should you do during let's say be, uh, before you eat food during the eating and even after the eating what should you do what habits what should you put in mind okay so one we talk about wash your hands before eating food wash your hands before eating food okay so before you you eat food make sure you have washed your hand and when you wash your hands make sure you are using clean water don't use don't go to the to the to the stagnant water in the compound you wash your hands you are contaminating your hands the more so use clean water and soap all together so clean water and soap will kill the germs all together so if you ask why do we wash our hands before eating or before handling food so you wash your hands to remove germs from the hands all together so why do you wash your hands that is to remove germs but if in the question <coughs> there's a detergent for example why do we wash or why are we advised to wash our hands with clean water and soap because the question has a detergent soap so the answer changes to killing germs the, the soap kills what germs so if they say why do we wash our hands that question has no soap in it so that is to remove germs but if there is soap that is to kill germs wash our hands with clean water and soap to kill germs all together so always wash your hands with clean water and soap before eating or before handling food that is to do it to kill germs two um sit upright when eating food you have to sit what sit upright upright is one word sit upright when eating food all together so when eating food sit upright so this one enables the uh the digestive tract okay they are mentally canal to be upright so even the food pipe or the esophagus call it the gullet uh, will be straight and so food will pass through easily to the stomach where it is uh, stored for further uh, digestion uh, so you have to sit upright don't bend don't squat don't so you have to sit uh, upright then another one chew food properly before swallowing chew food chew food properly before swallowing so before you swallow food make sure you have chewed it properly okay yeah some of you children <coughs> when you are given food on a very big saucepan uh, let's say okay it is a small saucepan and you are about to turn boys on a, a small saucepan of food so because you want to eat faster and the, and the you get satisfied you eat you take a, the bigger share than others so you eat hurriedly fast yeah, so that uh, 
uh, you find that you are not even chewing this food properly okay so you have to make sure that when you are eating food any food you put in the mouth you chew it properly the meat chew it properly <coughs> any kind of food chew it properly before you swallow it okay now what is the problem of failing to chew food properly if you don't chew it properly then it will lead one food will choke you okay it will reach the esophagus i mean the yeah the esophagus or the gullet and will not be able to to pass properly it will not be able to pass through properly so so that one will lead to choking and it can also lead to constipation okay constipation that is a condition of passing out to hard stool okay because you do not chew your food properly so the the feces will come out when they are hard so if you suffer from constipation how together so chew it properly and make sure you also take some water as you uh, take the food that is before or after okay we are always advised to either take the food after eating or before eating all together because if you eat as you drink at the same time then your uh, digestive tract your stomach will be filled with water and you take less food which may also affect you you may get some deficiency diseases in so doing avoid talking while eating while eating avoid talking avoid talking while eating out together so when you are eating don't talk yeah this is a common to some of you children so when you are eating don't talk what's the danger of talking while eating so as you talk you invite in air so you will swallow food with the air out together so in so doing as you swallow it this uh, air will cause choking your food will choke you out together so make sure as you eat food you don't talk so as you talk uh, with the food you invite air into the mouth and you swallow the food with air and then food will end up choking you so lastly there are very many uh, there are very many uh, chew food when the mouth is closed chew food when the mouth is closed so these are good eating habits okay so when you move from home you are, you go to somebody's party you have gone to a party they have, they have invited you to a, a, a party let's say birthday party or any other party then you reach there and you are you 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 just rush to eat food when the hands are not washed eh? you you eat when you are standing you chew food very fast and you don't chew it you chew it just one two times and then you swallow you you, you, are, you are talking all the time the mouth is open so people will say uh, uh, this is not a, a good person so you have to put this in mind uh, when you are eating food okay so that you don't ashamed yourself chew food when the mouth is closed close the mouth don't chew don't chew food as you open okay this food is good uh, when it is out, but when it is in the mouth after you have chewed it, it is not uh, good to show it to other people. So you have to close your mouth as uh, you eat the food. Okay, so let's go to another one. <coughs> uh, we let's look at bad eating habits. So these are good eating habits. The bad eating habits, we can discuss them as uh, eating food with unwashed hands okay eating food with unwashed hands uh, you can talk about uh, lying down on the bed while eating that's not allowed swallowing food before chewing it properly that's not good uh, <clears throat> then putting big lumps of food in the mouth okay you get a very big piece of uh, potato uh, cassava and put it in the mouth that is a, a bad 
eating what habit okay uh huh let's go on all right so we have another question here write down any one danger of bad eating habits dangers dangers of war bad eating bad eating habits what are the dangers of bad eating habits if you eat food hurriedly you don't uh, wash your hands before you eat you put a very big piece of food in the mouth uh, you eat as you talk what are the dangers what will come what will happen if you are practicing only bad eating habits whenever you are eating <coughs> so eating food with unwashed hands leads to <coughs> diarrhea uh -huh. eating food with unwashed hands leads to what to diarrhea mm -hmm. do not try the spell of diarrhea so when you eat food when you have not washed your hands then you are going to eat the food with the germs the germs from your hands so these germs uh, will reach into your body and they lead to diarrhea passing out of what are the stool uh -huh. <coughs> bending while eating interferes with the movement of food in the alimentary canal uh -huh. eating while bending interferes with the, mo the movement of food interferes with the movement of food movement of food in the alimentary water in the alimentary alimentary canal all together so that's the danger of eating while bending while standing so you have to sit upright as we said so when you bend then you are you are bending your alimentary canal so the passage of food is blocked so therefore food will not move properly through the alimentary canal <coughs> swallowing food swallowing food before proper chewing can lead to indigestion uh -huh. improper chewing of food leads to what leads to indigestion all together so when you are eating food make sure you chew it properly so that uh, there is no indigestion so this indigestion can lead to uh, choking food can choke you because you have not uh, chewed it properly <coughs> you have not uh, chewed it properly with your teeth so it can lead to indigestion and choking uh -huh. so next one we can talk about in number four talking when talk when you talk when food is in the mouth then uh, this one will lead to uh you, yeah there are many things in the mouth and spitting you can even spit food to other people while you are talking okay so it is not good so when you are eating don't talk because as you talk the air interferes with the food 
you can end up spitting food on other people you can end up opening the mouth and people are looking at your food you, are, you have already chewed in the mouth so <coughs> that is it don't it good so talking while eating can lead to spitting of food on other people spitting of food on other people so this is not good to eat while uh, talking out together children so that is it those uh, those are the dangers of uh, bad eating uh, habits okay <clears throat> so let's go on to the next one uh, children we appreciate all of you who are viewing us we appreciate and a group of companies we appreciate the parents who have given or provided this time to the children so that they sit and try to have some learning thank you so much so let's proceed our viewers the children in the next one we have uh, in number three this one is got from p5 about soil soil erosion what is soil erosion what does the term soil erosion mean soil erosion mm -hmm. so soil erosion yes yes somebody has said it thank you so somebody say soil erosion is the washing away of topsoil by its agents okay so <coughs> uh, um, soil erosion erosion is from what eroding to erode is to remove okay uh-huh so you can say soil erosion is the removal you know what removal of soil by its agents removal of what soil by its what yes agents so that one is what we call soil erosion the removal of soil the removal of soil or you can call it top soil removal of let's say top soil removal of top soil by by each sea agents so soil erosion is the removal of top soil by its what agents can you say it all of you yes thank you so much so that is what we call soil what erosion so the top when the top soil is removed by the agency of soil erosion okay <clears throat> that is what you call soil what erosion now uh, let's go to the next one state any one agent of soil erosion we are talking about agents of soil erosion so in the b let us list them agents of soil water agents of soil erosion okay <coughs> agents of soil erosion out together so agents these are forces that carry soil from one place to another so forces that carry soil from one place to another are called agents of soil erosion so uh we are going for a short break when we come back we are going to write or discuss more about this please don't go away um our dear viewers we want to welcome you again to this uh, uh, lesson science relative science to some uh, we appreciate all of you who are following us we appreciate intake group of companies we appreciate 
uh, all the program managers who, are, who always make sure this program is always there for you to uh, follow and uh, have some learning. We, oh, we appreciate all those program organizers. Thank you so much. <coughs> so uh, by the time we went for a short break, we have been discussing uh, the agents of soil erosion. So before this, we are talking about soil erosion and said soil erosion is the removal. So better use the word removal instead of uh, washing, okay? So when the soil is, uh, the top soil is uh, removed from the top, that is it, soil erosion, okay? So it is done by agents, okay? Agents, we call them agents of soil erosion, all together. And uh, we are saying agents of soil erosion, these are forces that carry away top soil from one place to another. Forces that carry soil, forces that carry top soil from one place to another. Those forces, we call them agents of soil erosion. So, one of them we talk about, we talk about uh, running water. We talk about what? Running water okay yeah you can also say fast flowing water fast flowing water okay yeah uh -huh. then the uh, next one we can talk about is a uh, wind wind uh, when there is too much wind uh, you find that wind raises the dust, the soil, and then it is taken to another place. Then talk about animals. Animals. Cows. When cows move, they try to take soil through their feet to another place. Out together when man man is also under animals so when man is digging so he takes the soil from one place taken to another place so man okay is under animals so basically those are the agents of erosion we can talk about now let's go to uh, causes what are the causes of soil erosion causes of soil erosion how together, children in P4, P5, and P6. <coughs> this is got from the P5 class about soil erosion. Uh huh. So, causes in C, in A it was what is soil erosion, in B was the agents. Now, in C, are the causes of soil erosion. Mm -hmm. What makes the soil to be eroded? What makes the soil to be carried away from one place to another? <coughs> so one, um, so mostly these are activities done by man during uh, farming. Okay, so these activities they expose soil to its edges. They expose soil to wind, to animals, to uh, running water, or fast flowing water, okay? So, these activities done by man, uh, they expose the soil. For example, activities like deforestation. <coughs> activities like what? Deforestation. Okay, do you know what deforestation is? the cutting down of trees 
is called what uh, deforestation the massive massive when trees are cut on a large scale okay not only cutting one tree or two but when 10 20 30 trees are cut down that is what called deforestation so deforestation um, you know plant C hold the soil family okay the plant roots they hold the soil but when you cut down the tree the trees then the roots will will also die they will, they will rot and then the soil remain loose so there will be nothing to hold what the, the the soil family so therefore uh, soil will become loose and then it will be easily eroded away by the agents of erosion like wind and the running water then another talk about over over grazing we are talking about what over grazing this is the rearing of many animals on a smaller piece of what smaller piece of land so we call that one no? over grazing you find you have a smaller plot smaller plot of land and you have over 100 heads of 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 animals of cattle all together so you find it uh, as they move they overstep on the on the ground so the soil i mean the grass itself will dry okay as it dries then the soil remain bare it remain open bare means open it remain open and therefore uh, so uh, wind uh, water <coughs> running water animals will easily uh, erode or wash away this water soil okay another uh, cause we can talk about is bush burning bush burning bush burning that is simply burning the bush okay you know the bush also cover the soil the soil is covered by the bush so when you got the bush you cannot see uh, bare soil the soil is covered by the moment you burn the bush then the soil will remain bare to remain open and when it is open then wind will easily erode or will blow off the the, the, the soil the animals <coughs> so what uh, uh, soil will be exposed to the agents of soil erosion so all these ones lead to the exposure lead to the opening of the soil lead, uh, they make the soil to remain bare exposing it to agents of soil erosion <coughs> there are many you can talk about talk about over cultivation over cultivation over what is cultivation what is over cultivation what does it mean hmm? yeah you uh, over cultivation growing of crops on uh, the same piece of land time after time okay you don't leave this land to rest to regain so as to regain its fertility a term we call farrowing okay the term we call following so over cultivation you keep growing crops, growing crops on the same piece of land. Uh, the more you do that, the more the soil will get exposed to agents of soil water erosion. <coughs> okay, let's move on. There are many others we haven't we, we, we haven't talked about. So we we can talk about plowing down slope not across okay that will also lead to uh, soil erosion okay let's look at the ways of controlling now if you have soil being eroded away due to this how can you control soil erosion so in D we are looking at uh, ways of controlling Controlling what? Soil what? Soil erosion. Soil what? Soil erosion. Altogether. 
So how can you control soil erosion? So when you can talk about to terracing. So you can say by terracing. By what? Eh? So if they ask you how does terracing control soil erosion? You say terracing reduces the speed of running water, the speed of fast flowing water. So <coughs> terracing, if it is a, it's in a mountain, okay, so you can dig terraces. These are terraces. So when water flows, so they, they, they dig some uh, holes, for example, across the mountain. So when water flows, it will be stop, uh, this uh, soil that has been eroded will stop will be stopped here it will be stopped it will be stopped by the water the terraces out together so that's what we call terracing so terracing reduces the speed of running water so in case they ask you how does terracing control soil erosion i'm repeating this you said terracing reduces the speed of running water mm -hmm. then another one you can write is by afforestation by practicing afforestation let me write them well one we said by terracing mm -hmm. two is by practicing by practicing afforestation afforestation do you know what afforestation is what is afforestation yes huh? somebody said it that's how we say afforestation is the planting of trees where they have never existed afforestation is the planting of trees where they have never existed <coughs> so another one is the uh, the opposite of afforestation which is what it eh? reafforestation by practicing by practicing reafforestation out together so you must take care of the spellings in the science we consider the spellings a lot so whatever you write make sure it is that very one so always take care of your spellings when you are writing your science words i would be the children so uh uh we talk about deforestation deforestation that is the cutting down of trees and has single f okay afforestation and reforestation they have a double f out together so the difference between the two, afforestation and reforestation, is that the afforestation is the planting of trees where they have never existed. Then reforestation, this is the planting of trees where they have been cut. Altogether, if there have been many trees on one part of my forest and they have been cut down, so when you plant trees there where they have been cut, then what you are doing is called the reforestation. Okay, trees have been cut, you are now planting them there. But when you go to a place where there have never been trees, and then you plant trees there, that practice is called the afforestation. Out together, children in P4, P5. Okay. <clears throat> then another one you can talk about is by contour plowing. By practicing contour plowing. Practicing, practicing what? Contour, plowing. Practicing, contour, plowing. <coughs> so, contour plowing, that is plowing across the slope. Okay? Across the slope of a mountain. If we say a mountain. So, across you plow across okay this one is different from terracing 
tell us in your dig ridges across okay but you can do a plowing you are plowing you dig okay across the what the the hill or the slope of a mountain together yeah so you'll find major this uh, practiced in areas that are hilly mountainous areas like a mountain like areas of Kabare areas of Kanungu they practice uh, those uh, contour plowing, uh, plowing and terracing all together <coughs> okay then another one to talk about is by cover cropping by cover cropping Uh, by cover cropping by cover cropping so cover cropping <coughs> so here uh, plants cover the soil so what you do you plant crops between other plants okay that can take long to mature we have plants that take long to mature uh, like uh, uh, bananas okay like uh, let's say eucalyptus okay those ones take long to mature so what you do you plant other crops on the ground to cover the soil okay you can plant the like, like you can put uh, have pumpkins you can put beans okay to cover the soil that's what you call cover cropping so cover crops uh do what it, they prevent soil from being uh carried away out together okay so let's go to another one another number uh, this one is extracted from p6 this one has been from p4 i mean p5 we talked about uh, the eating habits, those are from P4. <coughs> now, in this one, number four, let's talk about P6 drugs. I'm sure that P6 you have talked about uh, alcohol, smoking, and drugs. So, here we have. Uh, a question that what is a drug what is a drug that when introduced in the body can affect the normal functioning of uh, body systems together remember these drugs are introduced into the body either voluntarily
calicinides. These are drugs that uh, meet people's uh, health needs. All together, children. So when you say you are suffering from malaria, you are you go to the hospital. You, you are given uh, malaria queen. All together. So when you are given malaria queen, for example, you take it and the malaria goes. That means uh, malaria queen is uh, an essential drug because it has made it has helped you to uh, recover from malaria. narcotic drugs so we say narcotic drugs are drugs which cause addiction after a prolonged use or after dependence okay drugs these are drugs uh, which cause addiction drugs which cause addiction Okay, which cause addiction after prolonged use, after long use, or after using them for a long time. Okay, those are called the narcotic drugs, or you can call them narcotics. All right, so our dear children, we are going for another short break.
is drugs you can call them narcotic drugs call them narcotics you can call them drugs of dependency uh, there are very many talk about uh, marijuana uh -huh. talk about mira talk about those areas let's say islam areas okay you'll find a drug in a way that is harmful that is harmful to the body okay so that is called drug water <coughs> abuse so let's say for example people who take marijuana they take opium in Jaga, okay? So they don't take those drugs because they cover cropping prevent soil erosion mm -hmm. that was A in B uh, in which way does intercropping reduce soil erosion in which way does does it intercropping reduce reduce soil erosion mm -hmm. try that then another one is what does the term bush following mean what does the term bush following mean mm -hmm. so try that give an importance of bush following to a farmer 